One day, when Pooh was thinking, he thought he would go and see Eeyore, because he hadn't seen him since yesterday. And as he walked through the heather, singing to himself, <laughs> he suddenly remembered that he hadn't seen Owl since the day before yesterday, and so he thought that he would just look in at the Hundred Acre Wood on the way and see if Owl was at home. Well, he went on singing. Until he came to the part of the stream where the stepping stones were. And when he was in the middle of the third stone, he began to wonder how Kanga and Roo and Tigger were getting on, because they all lived together in a different part of the forest. And he thought, I haven't seen Roo for a long time, and if I don't see him today, it will be a still longer time. So he sat down on the stone in the middle of the stream and sang another verse of his song while he wondered what to do. And the other verse of the song was like this. I could spend a happy morning seeing Roo. I could spend a happy morning The sun was so delightfully warm, and the stone, which had been sitting in it for a long time, was so warm, too, that Pooh had almost decided to go on being Pooh in the middle of the stream for the rest of the morning, when he remembered Rabbit. Rabbit, said Pooh to himself. I like talking to Rabbit. He talks about sensible things. He doesn't use long, difficult words like owl. He uses short, easy words like, what about lunch? And help yourself, Pooh. I suppose, really, I ought to go see Rabbit, which made him think of another verse. I like his way of talking, yes I do It's the nicest way of talking just for two And to help yourself with rabbit Though it may become a habit Is a pleasant sort of habit So he got up off his stone, walked back across the stream, and set off for Rabbit's house. But he hadn't got far before he began to say to himself, Yes, but suppose Rabbit is out. Or, suppose I get stuck in his front door again, coming out, as I did once when his front door wasn't big enough. Because I know I'm not getting fatter, but his front door may be getting thinner. So, wouldn't it be better if... And all the time he was saying things like this, he was going more and more westerly, without thinking, until suddenly he found himself at his own front door again. And it was eleven o'clockish, which was time for a little something. <laughs> Half an hour later, he was doing what he had always really meant to do. He was stumping off to Piglet's house. Piglet was busy digging a small hole in the ground outside his house. Hello, Piglet. Hello. Hello, Pooh. I knew it was you. Uh, so did I. What are you doing? I'm planting a acorn, Pooh, so that it can grow up into an oak tree and have lots of acorns just outside the front door instead of having to walk miles and miles. Uh, do you see, Pooh? Well, suppose it doesn't. It will. Because Christopher Robbins says it will, so that's why I'm planning it. Well, if I plant a honeycomb outside my house, then it will grow up into a beehive, or a piece of a honeycomb, so as not to waste too much. Only then I might only get a piece of a 
beehive, and it might be the wrong piece where the bees were still buzzing and not honeying. Oh, bother. Oh, that would be rather bothering. Besides, Pooh, it's very difficult planning unless you know how to do it. Well, I do know, because Christopher Robin gave me a, a Master Shalem seed, and I planted it, and I'm going to have Master Shalems all over the front door. I thought they were called nasturtiums. No, not these. These are called Master Shalems. Well, what shall we do now? Let's go and see Kanga and Rue and Tigger. Uh, yes, let's. Piglet was still a little anxious about Tigger, who was a very bouncy animal with a way of saying, how do you do, which always left your ears full of sand, even after Kanga had said, gently, Tigger dear, and had helped you up again. So they set off for Kanga's house. Now, it happened that Kanga had felt rather motherly that morning and wanting to count things, like uh, ruse vests and how many pieces of soap there were left and the two clean spots in Tigger's feeder. So she had sent them out with a packet of watercress sandwiches for Rue and a packet of extract of malt sandwiches for Tigger to have a nice long morning in the forest not getting into mischief. And off they had gone. And as they went, Tigger told Rue, who wanted to know, all about the things that Tiggers could do. Can they fly? Oh, yes. They're very good flyers, Tiggers are. Stornary good flyers. Oh, can they fly as well as Owl? Oh, yes. Only they don't want to. Why don't they want to? Well, uh, they just don't like it somehow. Well, Rue couldn't understand this because he thought it would be lovely to be able to fly, but Tigger said it was difficult to explain to anybody who really wasn't a Tigger himself. Well, can they jump as far as Kangas? Yes, uh, when they want to. I love jumping. Let's see who can jump the farthest, you or me. I can. But we mustn't stop now or we shall be late. Late for what? For whatever we want to be in time for. I can swim. I can swim. I fell into the river and I swimmed. Can Tiggers swim? Of course they can swim. Tiggers can do everything. Can they climb trees better than Pooh? Climbing trees is what they do best. Much better than Pooh's. Could they climb this one? They're always climbing trees like that, up and down all day. Oh, Tigger, are they really? I'll show you. And you can sit on my back and watch me. Oh, Tigger! Oh, Tigger! Oh, Tigger! Up we go! I always said Tiggers could climb trees. And not that it's easy, mind you. Of course, there's the coming down, too, backwards, which will be difficult, unless one fell, which would be easy. And at the word easy, the branch he was standing on broke suddenly, and he just managed to clutch at the one above him as he felt himself going. And then, slowly, he got his chin over it. And then one back paw, and then the other, until at last he was sitting on it, breathing very quickly, and wishing that he had gone in for swimming instead. Rue climbed off and sat down next to him. Oh, Tigger, are we at the top? No. Are we going to the top? No. Oh, that was a lovely bit just now, when you pretended we were going to fall bump to the bottom and we didn't. Will you do that bit again? No. Shall we eat our sandwiches, Tigger? Yes. Uh, where are they? At the bottom of the tree. I don't think we'd better eat them just yet. Uh, by and by, Pooh and Piglet came along. Pooh was telling Piglet in a singing voice mm, that it didn't seem to matter if he didn't get any fatter. And he didn't think he was getting any fatter, what he did. And Piglet was wondering how long it would be before his haycorn came up. Look, Pooh. There's something in one of the pine trees. Oh, so there is. There's an animal. I is it one of the fiercer animals? It's a jagular. What do jagulars do? They hide in the branches of trees and they drop on you as you go underneath. Christopher Robin told me. Uh, perhaps we better hadn't go underneath Pooh in case he dropped and hurt himself. Oh, they don't hurt themselves. They're such very good droppers. Well, Piglet still felt that to be underneath a very good dropper would be a mistake, and he was just going to hurry back for something which he had forgotten when the jugular called out to them. Help! 
Help! Uh, that's what jagulars always do. They call, help, help. And then when you look up, they drop on you. I'm, I'm looking down. Pooh and Piglet! Pooh and Piglet! Pooh? I believe it's Tigger and Roo. Yes, so it is. Oh, I thought it was a jagular and another jagular. Hello, Roo. What are you doing? We can't get down. We can't get down. Isn't it fun? Pooh, isn't it fun? Tigger and I are living in a tree like Owl, and we're going to stay here forever and ever. I can see Piglet's house. Piglet, I can see your house from here. Aren't we high? Is Owl's house as high up as this? How did you get up there, Roo? On Tigger's back. And Tiggers can't climb downwards because their tails get in the way, only upwards. And Tigger forgot about that when he started, and he's only just remembered. So we've got to stay here forever and ever unless we go higher. What did you say, Tigger? Oh, uh, Tigger says if we go higher, we shan't be able to see Piglet's house so well. So we're going to stop here. Piglet, what should we do? Are they stuck? Couldn't you climb up to them? Well, I might, Piglet, and I might bring Roo down on my back, but I couldn't bring Tigger down. So we must think of something else. Think, think, think. And in a thoughtful way, Pooh began eating Tigger and Roo's sandwiches. Well, whether he would have thought of anything before he had finished the last sandwich, I don't know. But he had just got to the last but one when there was a crackling in the bracken, and Christopher Robin and Eeyore came strolling along together. I shouldn't be surprised if it hailed a good deal tomorrow. Blizzards and whatnot. Being fine today doesn't mean anything. It has no significance. Uh, signif uh, oh, what's that word? Well, it has none of that. It's just a small piece of weather. There's Pooh. Hello, Pooh. It's Christopher Robin. He'll know what to do. Oh, Christopher Robin. And Eeyore. Tigger and Roo are right up the six pine trees and they can't get down. And I was just saying that if only Christopher Robin... And Eeyore. If only you were here, then we could think of something to do. I thought that if Eeyore stood at the bottom of the tree, and if Pooh stood on Eeyore's back, and if I stood on Pooh's shoulders... And if Eeyore's back snapped suddenly, then we could all laugh. Ha, <laughs> ha. Well, it's amusing in a quiet way, but it's not really helpful. Well, I I thought... That... Would it break your back, Eeyore? Well, that's what would be so interesting, Pooh. Not being quite sure till uh, afterwards. Oh. I've got an idea. Listen to this, Piglet, and then you know what we're trying to do. I'll take off my tunic, and we'll each hold a corner. And then Roo and Tigger can jump into it. And it will be all soft and bouncy for them. And they won't hurt themselves. Getting Tigger down and not hurting anybody. Keep those two ideas in your head, Piglet, and you'll be all right. But Piglet wasn't listening. He was so agog at the thought of seeing Christopher Robin's blue braces again. He had only seen them once before, when he was very much younger, and being a little overexcited by them, he had had to go to bed half an hour earlier than usual. And he had always wondered since if they were really as blue and as bracing as he had thought them. So when Christopher Robin took his tunic off, and they were, he felt quite friendly to Eeyore again and held the corner of the tunic next to him and smiled happily at him. Now, I'm not saying there won't be an accident now, mind you. They're funny things, accidents. You never have them till you're having them. Tigger! Tigger, we're gonna jump! Look at me jumping, Tigger! Like flying, my jumping will be. Can Tiggers do it? I'm coming, Christopher Robin! And Rue jumped straight into the middle of the tunic. And he was going so fast that he bounced up again almost as high as where he was before. And he went on bouncing and saying, ooh, for quite a long time. And then at last he stopped and said, ooh, lovely. And they put him on the ground. 
Come on, Tigger, it's easy. But, but Tigger was holding on to the branch and saying to himself, it's all very well for jumping animals like kangas, but it's quite different for swimming animals like Tigger's. And he thought of himself floating on his back down a river or striking out from one island to another. And he felt that that was really the life for a Tigger. Come, come along, you'll be all right. Just wait a moment. A small piece of bark in my eye. Come on, it's easy. Look out! There was a crash and a tearing noise and a confused heap of everybody on the ground. Christopher Robin and Pooh and Piglet picked themselves up first, and then they picked Tigger up. And underneath everybody else was Eeyore. Oh, Eeyore! Are you hurt? Is Tigger here? Yes, Tigger's here. Well, just thank him for me. And the moral of this little story is that Tiggers don't climb trees. Very well, that is. The end. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Tubby little cubby all stuffed with fluff. up suddenly in the middle of the night and listened. Then he got out of bed and lit his candle and stumped across the room to see if anybody was trying to get into his honey cupboard. And they weren't. So he stumped back again, blew out his candle and got into bed. Then he heard the noise again. Is that you, Piglet? But it wasn't. Oh, uh, come in, Christopher Robin. But Christopher Robin didn't. Oh, just tell me about it tomorrow, Eeyore. But the noise went on. <laughs> said whatever it was. And Pooh found that he wasn't asleep after all. What can it be, he thought. There are lots of noises in the forest, but this is a different one. It isn't a growl, and it isn't a purr, and it isn't a bark, and it isn't the noise you make before beginning a piece of poetry. It's a noise of some kind made by a strange animal, and he's making it outside my door. So I shall get up and ask him not to do it. He got out of bed and opened his front door. Hello. 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 Who is it? Me. Oh, well, come here. So, whatever it was, came here, and in the light of the candle, he and Pooh looked at each other. I'm Pooh. I'm Tigger. Oh, does Christopher Robin know about you? Of course he does. Well, it's the middle of the night, which is a good time for going to sleep, and tomorrow morning we'll have some honey for breakfast. Do Tiggers like honey? Oh, they like everything. Then, if they like going to sleep on the floor, 
I'll go back to bed and we'll do things in the morning. Good night. When he woke in the morning, the first thing he saw was Tigger sitting in front of the glass and looking at himself. Hello. Hello. Oh, no. I found somebody just like me. I thought I was the only one of them. Pooh got out of bed and began to explain what a looking glass was. But just as he was getting to the interesting part, he was interrupted. Excuse me a moment, but there's something climbing up your table. Well, with one loud... <laughs> he jumped at the end of the tablecloth, pulled it to the ground, wrapped himself up in it three times, rolled to the other end of the room, and after a terrible struggle, got his head out into the daylight again and said cheerfully... Have I won? That's my tablecloth. I wondered what it was. It goes on the table and you put things on it. Then why did it try to bite me when I wasn't looking? I don't think it did. It tried, but I was too quick for it. Pooh put the cloth back on the table and he put a large honey pot on the cloth and they sat down to breakfast. And as soon as they sat down, Tigger took a large mouthful of honey and he looked up at the ceiling with his head to one side and made exploring noises with his tongue and considering noises and what have we got here noises. And then he said in a very decided voice, Tiggers don't like honey. Oh, I thought they liked everything. Everything except honey. Well, Pooh felt rather pleased about this and said that as soon as he had finished his own breakfast, he would take Tigger round to Piglet's house and Tigger could try some of Piglet's haycorns. So after breakfast, they ran around to see Piglet and Pooh explained as they went that Piglet was a very small animal who didn't like bouncing and he asked Tigger not to be too bouncy just at first. And Tigger, who had been hiding behind trees and jumping out at Pooh's shadow when it wasn't looking, said that Tiggers were only bouncy before breakfast and that as soon as they had had a few haycorns, they became very quiet and refined. So by and by, they knocked at the door of Piglet's house. Uh, hello, Pooh. Hello, Piglet. Uh, Piglet, this is Tigger. Oh, is it? I thought Tiggers were smaller than that. Not the big ones. They like haycorns, so that's what we've come for, because poor Tigger hasn't had any breakfast yet. Help yourself. So you're Tigger. Well, well. What? Excuse me. Tiggers don't like haycorns. But you said they liked anything except honey. Everything except honey and haycorns. Oh. I see. Oh, what about thistles? Thistles is what Tiggers like best. Then let's go along and see Eeyore. So the three of them went, and after they had walked and walked and walked, they came to the part of the forest where Eeyore was. Hello, Eeyore. Uh, Eeyore, this is Tigger. What is? This. Yes. Eeyore walked all around Tigger one way, and then he turned and walked all around him the other way. What did you say it was? Tigger. Uh. Uh, he's just come. Uh. Well, when is he going? Pooh explained to Eeyore that Tigger was a great friend of Christopher Robin's, who had come to stay in the forest. And Piglet explained to Tigger that he mustn't mind what Eeyore said because he was always gloomy. And Eeyore explained to Piglet that, on the contrary, he was feeling particularly cheerful this morning. And Tigger explained to anybody who was listening that he hadn't had any breakfast yet. I knew there was something. Tiggers always eat thistles, so that was why we came to see you, Eeyore. Well, don't mention it, Pooh. Oh, Eeyore... I didn't mean that. You see, I didn't want to see... Quite, quite. But your new stripy friend, naturally, he wants his breakfast. What did you say his name was? Tigger. Well, then, come this way, Tigger. Eeyore led the way to the most thistly looking patch of thistles that ever was, and he waved a hoof at it. It's a little patch I was keeping for my birthday, but... After all, what are birthdays? Here today and gone tomorrow, so help yourself, Tigger. 
Are these really thistles? Yes. What tiggers like best? That's right. I see. So he took a large mouthful and he gave a large crunch. <laughs> he sat down and put his paw in his mouth. What's the matter? Hot. Your friend appears to have bitten on a bee. Pooh's friend stopped shaking his head to get the prickles out and explained that Tiggers didn't like thistles. Well, then, why bend a perfectly good one? But you said, you said that Tiggers like everything but honey and acorns. And thistles. Well, Tigger was now running around in circles with his tongue hanging out. Pooh looked at him sadly. What are we going to do? Oh, we must go at once and see Christopher Robin. You'll find him with Kanga. Um... Could you ask your friend to do his exercises somewhere else? I shall be having lunch directly, and I don't want it bounced on just before I begin. It's a trifling matter and fussy of me, but uh, we all have our little ways. Oh, certainly. Come along, Tigger, and we'll go and see Kanger. She's sure to have lots of breakfast for you. Hot! Come on! Pooh and Piglet walked slowly after him, and as they walked, Piglet said nothing because he couldn't think of anything. And Pooh said nothing because he was thinking of a poem. And when he thought of it, he began. What should we do about poor little Tigger? If he never eats nothing, he'll never get bigger. He doesn't like honey and acorns and thistles because of the taste and because of the bristles. And all the good things which an animal likes have the wrong sort of swallow or too many spikes. He's big enough anyhow. Well, he isn't really so very big. Well, he seems so. Pooh was thoughtful when he heard this, and then he murmured to himself the remainder of the poem. But whatever his weight in pounds, shillings, and ounces, he always seems bigger because of his bounces. Oh, that's a whole poem. Do you like it, Piglet? All except the shillings. I don't think they ought to be there. Oh, you see, they wanted to come in after the pounds, so I let them. It's the best way to write poetry, letting things come. Oh, I didn't know. Tigger had been bouncing in front of them all this time, turning round every now and then to ask, is this the way? And now at last they came in sight of Kanga's house, and there was Christopher Robin. Tigger rushed up to him. Oh, there you are, Tigger. I knew you'd be somewhere. I've been finding things in the forest. I found a Pooh and a Piglet and an Eeyore, but I can't find any breakfast. Pooh and Piglet came up and hugged Christopher Robin and explained what had been happening. Don't you know what Tigger's like? I expect if I thought very hard, I should. But I thought Tigger knew. I do. Oh, I do. Everything there is in the world except honey and acorns and... Uh, what were those hot things called? Thistles. Yes. Uh, thistles. Uh, those. Oh, well then Kanga can give you some breakfast. So they went into Kanga's house, and when Ruid said, Hello, Pooh, and Hello, Piglet, once, and Hello, Tigger, twice, because he had never said it before, and it sounded funny, they told Kanga what they wanted, and Kanga said very kindly, Well, look in my cupboard, Tigger dear, and see what you would like, because she knew at once that however big Tigger seemed to be, he wanted as much kindness as Rue. Shall I look too, said Pooh, who was beginning to feel a little eleven o'clockish, And he found a small tin of condensed milk, and something seemed to tell him that Tiggers didn't like this. So he took it into a corner by itself and went with it to see that nobody interrupted it. But the more Tigger put his nose into this and his paw into that, the more things he found which Tiggers didn't like. And when he had found everything in the cupboard, and couldn't eat any of it. He said to Kanga, what happens now? But Kanga and Christopher Robin and Piglet were all standing around Rue watching him have his extract of malt. And Rue was saying, must I? And Kanga was saying, now Rue dear, you remember what you promised? What? 
is it. His strengthening medicine, he hates it. So Tigger came closer, and he leaned over the back of Rue's chair, and suddenly he put out his tongue and took one large gollop, and with a sudden jump of surprise, Kanga said, oh, and then clutched at the spoon again just as it was disappearing and pulled it safely back out of Tigger's mouth. But the extract of malt had gone. Tigger, dear. <laughs> He's taking my medicine. He's taking my medicine. <laughs> He's taking my medicine. <laughs> then Tigger looked up at the ceiling. Please, quiet, please, Rue. Tigger looked up at the ceiling and closed his eyes, and his tongue went round and round his chops in case he had left any on the outside, and a peaceful smile came over his face as he said, So, that's what Tigger's like. Which explains why he always lived at Kanga's house afterwards and had extract of malt for breakfast, dinner, tea, and sometimes, when Kanga thought he wanted strengthening, he had a spoonful or two of Rue's breakfast after meals as medicine. <laughs>